Now this verse is a wonderful verse and it has two parts. If you see that semicolon there, that, that's uh, the division of the verse. <clears throat> so this is a wonderful verse and it explains things to us. So we want to read this together. It says, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Okay, so now this first part, it says for the wages of sin. Wage. Do you understand what that means? All right, um, for example, maybe perhaps recently um, go to McDonald's, McDonald's, you know, where they make hamburgers and stuff. And you go there, drive in, ask, you know, place your order, and there's a worker there, right? There's somebody there working. So they're working, you know, hour, eight hours, whatever. And the McDonald's company will pay them because they work there. That money is what we call their wage. It's what they've earned. And McDonald's will pay them. Why will they pay them? McDonald's will pay them because they work for McDonald's. They work, and so McDonald's company will pay them. They won't work if they won't get paid. And if they miss, they won't get paid. But when they work, they get paid. They will. That is called their wage because they worked and they earned that money. Now if we sin, and we do sin, and we will sin, but when we sin, we earn something for that. What do we earn? The Bible says the wages of sin is death. So because we sin, when we sin, we earn death. Do you understand this? So McDonald's, you know, people go to work at McDonald's, they work, and McDonald's will pay them money. Money's their wage. And sin, we, because of our sin, we earn death. Do you understand this? That's the punishment for sin. That's the wage of sin. And when you and I sin, we earn death. Just the same as when a person works at McDonald's, they earn money. Death. What does this mean, death? Now, there are two kinds of death. There are two. The first one, death, means your soul and your body separate. So we read many stories <clears throat> about, we read stories about Rachel. That was Jacob's wife a long time ago in the Old Testament. She was pregnant the second time. She was in labor, and it was time for the baby to be born. And the Bible says that she died, that her soul 
left. Her body was there and her soul was gone, left, separated from the body. That is the first death, when the soul and the body separate. When the body dies, the soul goes. It's gone from the body. It's released. So the body's there, but the person is gone. The person is left. That is the first death. And also in the Bible, the Bible explains that there is a second death. The second death, what, what, what does that mean, the second death? It is also a separation, but it's separation from God for eternity. So right now, here we are, living, breathing, walking, heart is beating. And God has made a place of punishment for sin, a place for also for the bad angels, for Satan himself, a place named hell. That place is separate from God himself. When a person is separated from God forever, that is where they are. That's the second death. And when we sin, you know, our body will die first. And secondly, we also will be separated from God forever. That is the wages for our sin. That is the punishment for our sin. So notice this word, but. Praise the Lord for this word. But. The gift. Of God. Is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ. Our Lord. Please notice, first, the first is gift. It's a gift. It's not something that you can earn. You don't earn this. So that's a different thing. With sin, we earned death. But God gives to us eternal life. It's a gift. You can't work and earn this gift. It's something that he gives to you. But how, how do you receive it? Through Jesus Christ. You must accept Jesus Christ. <clears throat> there are people who say, no, I, I don't want that gift. They refuse to accept Christ. If they refuse it, they don't have it. If they say no, you know, God, keep your gift. They will not have eternal life. But if a person says, yes, yes, I'm trust, I trust in you. Yes, I believe in you. I accept your gift. That person will have eternal life. Notice this is eternal life, eternal it means it's forever. It's not for a day and then you lose it and say, oh no, I don't have it. Where can I find it again? That's not how it works. You don't have to say, please give me this gift again. It's, one, it's a gift that you receive one time and it continues forever. You can't lose it. It doesn't, you know, after a week or a month or whatever, you don't lose it and you have to pray and ask again to receive this gift. One time. And it lasts forever. That's eternal life. 
It lasts for eternity. It's through Jesus Christ our Lord. It's not through a church. The church can't give this gift to you. It's not through a person. A person cannot give this gift to you. Through baptism? No. Baptism cannot save you. What if you go to church a lot? No. Um, what if you give a whole bunch of money? Can you buy this gift? No. It is only through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Bible explains this quite clearly. How to receive this gift is through trusting in Jesus Christ. He died for me on the cross. He did that once and that was enough forever. <clears throat> Trust him once forever for salvation. That is wonderful and amazing, right? Amen. Now here's the story. Remember Moses, he was with Israel, the Israel people there in Egypt. The king, he was the ruler. In Israel, there were so many people under Egypt, under the king. They were in bondage, they were slaves for 400 years. They served uh, Egypt there, they were servants, slaves. And God told Moses to go, tell, tell the king, let my people go to come and serve me. God told Moses, go, but I'm going to tell you, he's going to refuse. He's going to say, no, he will. I know this. <clears throat> and because of that, I will show my power through miracles and punishments and trials and traumas I will show and finally he will allow you to go because of my power I will show the Israel people and they will know that I am Lord so there in Egypt they had many false gods many many idols but they will know that those are no good, that God is the only true God. So you remember the story. First of all, the first miracle was the water became blood, right? The second miracle was the frogs from the waters. And the third miracle, lice. All over everything, everywhere, everyone. Next were the flies. I mean, they were so thick, people were breathing them in. It's terrible. And the fifth miracle, that all the cattle died. Through, through some disease, all of them. And then after that, boils, sores all over, very painful. The people suffered so much. After that was the hail. It rained down hail and destroyed with fire. And after that, locusts, locusts came in and ate all of the vegetation, ate everything. And after that is darkness. That darkness was so thick, you could feel it. You couldn't even see your hand in front of your face. It was so densely dark. You could feel it and it caused great fear. And finally, is the Passover. 
So God explains this miracle, this punishment. And it will be the last. And he told people, go, just go. That, that's, when, that's when God broke the king. But the, the people had to follow God's plan for this to succeed. The Bible says Israel, the Israel people must choose a lamb, a male lamb of one year. It's got to be one year old. They choose them, a male lamb, and the male lamb must be perfect. No spots, no blemishes, no sickness, no deformities. Must be perfect, healthy, strong, whole. And then keep it two weeks. Watch it. Make sure everything is still good. This is lamb has no problems, no disease, no not lame, no deformities. And at and that night that they would kill it and gather the blood and paint the blood on the doorposts. Like this. Paint it with the lamb's blood. And that would protect the Israelites, their home, from the death angel. That night, the death angel would pass through Egypt, all throughout the country. And if the house, if the door had no blood on it, the angel of death would enter and would kill the firstborn of that family in that household. The firstborn means the oldest child. So family, there's a mom and a dad and they have, you know, these children, first, second, third, fourth. The first one would die. Throughout all of Egypt, every family and the animals, you know, the animals have their offspring. The firstborn would die of their animals as well. How to be safe from that? Got to follow God's plan, the Passover rules. Choose out this lamb, one year old, a male lamb, perfect. And then at night, kill it and paint Paint his blood over the doorposts, over the door jam outside the, uh, your house, and stay in your house all night. Because that night the angel of death went through searching to see if there was no blood on the, on the doorpost, they would, it would enter and kill the firstborn. But if there was blood on the doorpost, that angel of death would pass over that house. If there's no blood on the doorpost, the angel of death would enter and kill the firstborn. But when he saw, <clears throat> if, there, if there was no blood, the angel of death would enter the home and kill the firstborn. And he went through all, throughout all of Egypt and did that. So it's interesting here. That happened a long time ago in Egypt. The Bible says, Jesus, he is our lamb. Our Passover lamb. Please notice this verse. John chapter 1 verse 29 says the next day John 
seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, So there were a lot of people there. He says, hey, hey, look, behold, behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Jesus is our Lamb. He removes our sin from all the world. Also notice in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 says, Purge out, therefore, the old leaven. You know, leaven, that's, that's bread. Bread with yeast in it. That ye may be a new lump you know, for bread without yeast. In the Old Testament, yeast represents sin. <coughs> Excuse me. So you put the little water, a little yeast, a little sugar, and then, you know, the bubbles will start to grow in, right? Keep it warm, it'll get larger and larger, right? How does it do that? Because of the yeast. It grows and it makes So, in the Old Testament, that is representative of sin. So they use that as an example of sin. So in the Old Testament, in the story of the Passover, two weeks before they removed all the yeast from their house. And the Bible says, um, as ye are unleavened. Un means without or not leaven. There is none, there's, meaning there's no sin. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Jesus Christ is our Passover lamb. So secondly notice the Passover is a blood token. Token means a reminder, a remembrance. It means it's something to help you remember something. Say, oh, oh yeah, I remember that. Notice in Genesis 9.13, see the word token there? Token, it, it means it shows something to help you remember something. Something that happened before. So notice in this verse says, I, God, I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be it. What? The bow, the bow. It shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. See this rainbow here? That is a token, a token meaning to help you remember something that happened before. What are we supposed to remember? We're supposed to remember God's promise that he would never destroy the world with water again. Never. It is his promise, his covenant. It's his promise to people of the earth that he would never destroy the world with water again.
Now we do know, he's told us, that he will destroy the world again, but he won't do it with water. He's going to use fire the second time. But every time we see this rainbow, we can remember his promise that he will not destroy all the world with water again. That is his token to help us remember. Remember God's promise, his covenant, to never destroy the world with water again. Okay? A token means something that helps you to remember, and in this case, to remember God's promise. So the blood on the doorpost, that is a reminder to us. That helps us to remember that Jesus' blood protects us from death, from our sin. So remember, the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. Because of my sin, I have earned death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That blood that is painted about the doorpost that helps us to remember that Jesus saved me from death, from my sin. That's a token. That remembrance, that reminder is a, it's a token. So many people misunderstand salvation. Many people think, I go to church, that's good enough to save me. Or if I do enough good things, I will be saved. If I become baptized, that will save me. Or the priest, the priest will forgive my sin. No, these things are not possible. The Bible said that Jesus himself saves me. Not me, myself. Not anything that I've done. Not my church, not my pastor, nothing. Not, not my money. It is Christ and Christ alone. Jesus only is my lamb. And only he can save me. Not anything else. Was her story? I remember myself. Um, I was in college. I was a junior in college. It was my junior year. And at that time, it was a tradition for the students to borrow money for a new car for their senior year. So usually it was a super fancy car. So that year, for example, a Ford Probe, or a Ford Mustang, Toyota Tundra? Supra. Supra? Supra. So there were, those were th three cars. So they offered a cheap loan. A loan. You know, like borrowing money, right? The bank offered a cheap loan for us so that we could buy this new fancy car. So really popular, many people, many students, they were super excited about it. It was attrition, I mean, it happened every year. The juniors, you know, would do that. But I felt like, yeah, I'm just not comfortable with that. 
you know, borrowing money. I've never borrowed money before. Um, I don't really need a car. Um, I'm fine just staying here and, you know, I don't need that. I don't need to just drive around. So later, maybe, we'll see. But right now, I'm good. <clears throat> I don't need to borrow money for a fancy car. It's not that big a deal. I don't feel comfortable doing that. And then that same year at Christmas time, no, uh, it was the next year. It was my senior year at Christmas. I went back home and my mom and dad, they gave me a car. That was amazing. I was so surprised. Also that year I found out that, that I had an issue with my body and because of that I had a health issue. Because of that I could not become a pilot. And because of that lost. So because of that, my, um, my, I lost, uh, I thought I would, I had to, um, I was in the reserve as a student. And because of that, I didn't have a whole lot of money. About $800 a month for everything. For food, for my apartment, for everything. Uh, for clothes and all of that. $800 a month, it's not a lot of money. Um, so I couldn't afford to pay for a loan on a car. I would not have been able to afford that. But God knew all of these things. He knew what was going to happen. I didn't know. I didn't have a clue about what that. But I don't know why I didn't feel comfortable getting a loan. I didn't understand it at the time. But if I had borrowed that money, if I had gotten that loan, I would have been stuck. I would have been so broke. Because I was broke. And I thank God that he worked in my heart in that respect. Trust God. When he convicts you about something, when he tells you something, follow him. So the Passover is a yearly reminder to us of his power to save us from sin, to save us from death. So notice this family is gathered here together, this family. So this is something that they do every year at this time. They gather together and re, re, think about the two weeks where the lamb was chosen. They observed the lamb also. All the leaven, yeast, everything is removed from the house, clean up everything. It's all taken out. They gather together. They eat this uh, special food. And at night... They get the lamb, kill the lamb, gather the blood, paint it over the doorposts of the house. And that reminds them of God's power and love for them and his ability to save us from our sin. So when does this happen? So this is the Hebrew calendar and it's different. So our calendar here is in the middle. So we start every year in January. For the Hebrews, they do not do that. They start every year in this one. It's somewhere in the middle of March and April. So it's that month every year 
on the 14th day that they killed the lamb for Passover. Every year, the Hebrew family, they gather together, the Israel family, the Jewish family, they gather together to remember his power for salvation from death. So imagine, I mean, this is very interesting. Every year starts with this time to prepare for the rest of the year. This is a good lesson for us to put God first, to remember that God is first. Every day in the morning, wake up and thank God and, ha and talk with him. Talk with him first thing in the morning. So every week, starting with Sunday, we gather together and we worship God because God is first. And every day of every week, think of him. Every year, I encourage you and, and myself, this year, to offer up to God every year. It's a good habit that, to place God first. So now imagine kids gathering. And they're thinking, hey, <laughs> mom, dad, what's all this about? Why are we got to clean like this? Why we got to remove all the leaven? I don't get it. Why do we got to choose a lamb and watch it for two weeks? Why do we have to do that? Why, 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 why? Now kids ask mom questions a lot, right? They ask mom and dad a lot of questions. And the parents, they have an opportunity to explain how God saved us from death. How, how years ago we were in bondage in Egypt. And God told us to take this lamb and kill this lamb and gather the blood and paint it over the doorposts of our home. And to stay inside all night because the angel of death would be passing by. And God saved us. The angel of death passed over us. So every year we remember to do this. This is a reminder to think of him. So now ask yourself, why read the Bible? Why? Well, because he says so. The Bible says that man must not live by bread alone, but by every word that is from the mouth of God. That's the reason that we read the Bible. So important that we read the Bible every day. It's more important than food. So why do we go to church? Why do that? Why should we go to church? Well, because God said so. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. But some people refuse to go to church. You know, that's, that's their decision. But God wants us to gather together to not forsake it. God wants us to gather together. Why get baptized? Baptized isn't for salvation. Can't save you. Because the Bible says to. That we should go witness, be saved, and after that to teach and help, uh, and help them and, help, and baptize them after salvation. But it's not for salvation, it's after salvation. <clears throat> so why do we give money? 
Why would we do that? Because God says so. So we gather every week and we are to give money. Why help missionaries? Why? Why do that? Well, because God says so. Romans chapter 10, verse 15. Um, missions. Why missions? Why do we send missionaries? Why do missionaries go? Why does the church send them and support them? Support them with what? With money, yes, and prayer. Why, um, why if there's a dirty TV program, do we turn it off? Do we stop watching it? Why if there's a dirty movie, do we stop watching it? Well, because God says so. The Bible says, put no wicked thing before your eyes. So if something's wicked, turn away from it. Turn it off. It's that simple. It's what God said to do. So if we're watching, something comes into our eyes and it, it goes in our brain and we think about it. And it makes your thoughts dirty. So turn away from it. Turn it off change channel, whatever, to help your mind be clean. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day that we can gather here and learn. This class can learn to focus on Moses, on the Passover. The Passover was a time that you used to show your power and salvation from death. We thank you so much for the Bible, for our Passover lamb, for salvation from sin, from death. Thank you so much. Pray that you would bless the lesson. I pray that you would help us to remember these things and to tell others and help people understand the truth of Jesus, that he removes our sin, Jesus, who saves us, not church, not baptism, not doing a lot of good stuff, not even giving a lot of money. None of that can save a person. Only Jesus, only he can save us. He is our only savior. We cannot save ourselves. We must trust in Jesus alone. And he will forgive and save. Please, I pray that you would use this to help people know the truth. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.